Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter. Video producer, IndieWrestling.us, Sorgatron Media. With our friends at Indie International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance. With me as usual. Well, you know, pretty much as usual. It's been a weird schedule lately. But he's back. He's in somewhere in Texas, deep in the heart of, from what I understand, he's Eamon Peyton, or if he was in Canada, Patoon. At Eamon 2 please, on Twitter, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. One, I've missed you, sort of. Two, I don't think that's how Canadian speak works. I think um, <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure, let's go with that. Um, no, I'm excited to be back. I've been waiting so long to get to talk about Indie Wrestling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't finally get to, and I'm excited. Yay. We have so much to say. Oh, this so week. So much. You can check out everything, of course, at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show and all the, all the other fine program we have over there. And also, you can drop us a line at 412 206 WMS0 or Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. This week, we got a great interview with uh, somebody that's been making waves in the International Wrestling Cartel. He will be, uh, of course, as of this recording, this weekend at Cage Fury 2016. Uh, taking on another friend of the show, Jimmy DeMarco. It's going to be a vicious one between that and other things we'll be talking about later in the episode. Uh, His name is Wardlow, and we had a great conversation with him recently. Check it out. Hey, guys, on the line with us now, he's uh, one of the guys that's been tearing up. I know I've seen here in the International Wrestling Cartel in the Pittsburgh area. On the line with us right now is Wardlow. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing great every day. How are you? All right. All right. Uh, so like I said, you've been around IWC for a little bit, but we like to kind of roll it back a little bit uh, and, and let people know, like, how, what was your first kind of memory? What was the thing that kind of hooked you for wrestling uh, in general? My first memories of wrestling? Yeah. Uh, my first memories of wrestling go back to the days of the best of all time. The days of Bret the Hitman Hart, Macho Man, Hulk Hogan, um, Shawn Michaels, Heartbreak Kid. Um, The one event that really stands out for me um, was WrestleMania at Caesars Palace. I don't know if you remember that one with uh, Bret the Hitman Hart versus Yoko Zoo in the main event. Oh, nice. Shows like that, that really hooked me to it. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And, and, and so obviously you've been a longtime fan here. Uh, what kind of made you kind of transition to think, uh, hey, you know, maybe I want to get into the ring? Uh, to be 100% honest, I've thought that my entire life. I always knew I wanted to get into the ring. I mean, for ever since probably elementary school. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And, and and how did you like uh, finally determine? Like, how did you find out? Like, you know, find a school, and uh, and that kind of stuff. Uh, to be one hundred percent honest, I searched and searched for a school, and I couldn't find anything even close to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just so happened to be at a Monday Night Raw in Cleveland at the Q. And I was in the bathroom, <laughs> and I see a uh, promo card for an indie wrestling event. And on the back of the card, it said, come train at the dungeon. And I took that card, and I called them. And found out that there was a training school in Cleveland about an hour away from me. And uh, I finally uh, started training. Awesome. When you got into it, was there uh, a lot of surprises for you about what, what really went into it? Um, honestly, not really. I mean, I've been so involved with wrestling not necessarily hands-on obviously but Mm -hmm. just my years of watching it and uh you know i kind of started training myself in my own backyard even as a young kid when the first season of tough enough came out and for the first time you got to see how to take bumps 
and how to properly do things. And I remember watching Tough Enough and uh, bringing the mattress out into the living room and teaching myself how to do bumps just how they were on TV. That's awesome. So for the most part, I was uh, I was well prepared for it and kind of knew what I was getting myself into. Great. And like I said, mostly I know you here for uh, International uh, Wrestling Cartel. Uh, you've been around for, geez, probably about two years, I think, if I recall correctly. Correct. Yeah, it's been uh, uh, it's been about a year and a half. Awesome. And, uh, of course, you know, right now you're paired with somebody like a uh, uh, Justin Labar, who's been a really interesting uh, mouthpiece. And actually, I th- when we, we mentioned this interview, he says all, all questions go through him. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we don't exactly have the uh, Labar stamp of approval here uh, today. Uh, but what is it like a, a working with uh, uh, that group and, and especially somebody like uh, Justin Labar? Justin Labar is phenomenal. He is, uh, he's an amazing mind in the wrestling business. And I think anybody that's able to work with him, be paired with him, um, is lucky. And, uh, I think us together, uh, we could go all the way to the top with it. Awesome. And you're also like one of the uh, more imposing figures in, in the roster. Of course, you know, indie wrestling, there's a lot of kind of, I mean, you know, the kind of guys that get showcased on, like, say, a Cruiserweight Classic today on, on WWE. Um, do you find, uh, you know, you're one of the bigger, you know, uh, uh, you know, more, you know, WWE looking guys out there? Uh, does that tend to uh, help you stick out when you're uh, out on these shows? I think I stick out more than anybody on any show. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only do I have the look, not only do I have the size, but as people are starting to see, you know, I can do anything a cruiserweight can do as well. Mm-hmm. And that's what separates me from everybody. I can throw you through the air or I can fly through the air. It, it just depends on what moon I'm in. It was actually a great image. I, I know you're using it for your cover photo of, of you doing, I believe that ended up being a swanton coming off the top rope onto, onto Bulk Nasty. It indeed is. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and certainly you're somebody that I've seen have some tremendous matches over the years, especially uh, I, I remember ones with Jimmy Nuts, uh, who I know is, is uh, currently on the shelf with an injury, of course. Um, I think the mm-hmm. guys out in White Oak had some really, really good stuff. And, um, and I think when people see, you know, a larger guy on the indie show, you know, they say, well, this isn't going to be a good wrestling match per se, right? They expect like, you know, you're just going to go out there and kind of clubber people and that's about it. Right. Um, so do you think you've done very well with, uh, really kind of raising those expectations of what they can see from you then? What was that last part? Um, do you really think that people have, you've kind of raised those expectations of what you can get out of, out of a big guy like you on the indies? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I plan on raising every expectation, raising every bar, um, and I plan on putting out phenomenal matches. Mm -hmm. Um, When people leave, I want them to remember me as a wrestler that they've never seen nothing like before. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, And, uh, you know, uh, as long as you've been wrestling, like, what have what are kind of the, uh, the highlights for you of, of, uh, opponents that you've had over this time? Um, I mean, uh, obviously my biggest highlight was my most recent match. Uh, I defeated TNA superstar Robbie. E. I mean, he's, uh, he's most definitely been, uh, the biggest name that I've wrestled thus far. And, uh, you know, I got the victory over him. Um, another memory was, uh, stepping in the ring with John McChesney. You know, I know he's been around for a long time and I hate to admit it, but nobody's ever lit my chest up like, uh, like he did with, (laughs) with some chops. So, uh, I got no choice but to remember that. Well, he did learn those from Loki after all those years of uh, turning his his chest into a ground meat. 
Uh, so I, I think he's going from the best as far as the chops go. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Um, I have to ask you because I'm, I'm going through a little bit of your Twitter feed and I'm getting some recollections here of IWC's Wipeout, uh, this last show where you took on uh, uh, Robbie E. Uh, I have to ask, there's a lot of twerking celebrating going on uh, in your latest faction with the uh, IWC, with Ray Lynn, and even Justin LeBar getting in on the act. Are you a fan of the twerking? Um, you see, what they didn't get on camera, I can twerk my chest muscles. <laughs> I may, I'm not into twerking anything else, but I can do that. There you go. I'll 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 make sure that our ringside guy gets a gets a shot at that next time for you. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Uh, from there, um, I have to ask: uh, Are you watching anything um, outside? What are you? What's, what's kind of got your attention these days? Anything you're studying up on, whether it's recent or 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 kind of in the past? If you're are you reliving? Are you reliving the Toga Party of WrestleMania Nine with Yokozuna and Bret Hart, for instance, these days? Uh, every once in a while, I do love to uh, go back and look at early 90s wrestling um, just because those are all my memories as a kid and the characters back then were so loud and so larger than life. Uh, so I love going back and watching the early stuff. I really enjoy anything from 98 to 2000 which who doesn't mm -hmm. that was the best era in wrestling. Um, but to be 100% honest nowadays, a, I really don't have time to watch anything because all I do is work my ass off. But I, uh, recently just started catching up on the current raw and SmackDown products. And I got to say, it is a good time to be a professional wrestling fan. Awesome. A lot of options out there, especially even from WWE. It's, it's pretty incredible right now. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So, like I said, you've been at this for a little bit. Um, uh, tell me, what's the, uh, the, 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 and people take this a lot of different ways and however you want to interpret this, but we like to ask, what's the best thing and the worst thing about being an in independent wrestling up to this point for you? The best thing and the worst thing? Yeah. Um, the best thing is being able to do what you love, no matter what kind of scale it's on. It doesn't matter if there's a million people in the crowd. It doesn't matter if there's five people in the crowd. You know, I get to go out there and do what I love. And I don't do it for anybody but myself. I don't do it to entertain anybody but myself. You know, and then uh, I think everybody would agree with me. The worst thing uh, for most people is the pay. You know, you're traveling around and doing what you love, and, you know, you ain't getting much in return. Fortunately, I'm on Team Labar, and we're Team Money, so <laughs> I make a little more money than anybody else, I think, in the, in the Indies. But for the most part, that's the rough part, traveling around, you know, praying to uh, sell some merchandise to make a dollar to get you to the next show. Certainly. Certainly. Well, uh, you know, where can people find out where the Wardlow is coming? Well, I will be at every IWC event raising hell every single month. There's no question about that. Um, I am starting to uh, venture out a little bit and I believe I am going to start working a little closer to home uh, here in Cleveland soon. I don't know all the details quite yet. Um, Joe Dombrowski is, uh, has contacted me about uh, working with me. So uh, looks like in September, as long as everything goes as planned, September I'll be, uh, people will, finally be able to watch me in Cleveland do my thing. And then hopefully from there, I'll, uh, I'll really start venturing out and uh, working for different promotions and starting to travel a little more. Mm -hmm. 
Um, well, let me uh, a follow up question to that. Like you've mostly worked with just the IWC uh, uh, for 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 a good while. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, was that like a a a, a for a, a a focus on things or just kind of scheduling? Yeah, it was. Uh, I was doing ARW and IWC. Um, ARW is no longer around, so I kind of stuck with IWC. Um, you know, unfortunately, my scheduling is rough, and uh, I do a lot of work outside of professional wrestling as well. Uh, you know, because I'm all about making money. So I do everything I can to make that money. And like I said, the indie wrestling scene, you can only make so much, so I got to do what I got to do. But, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, so IWC had my full focus, and I wanted to give that company my full focus because, because I truly believe that company gives me their unique opportunities. And I wouldn't want to risk uh, losing an opportunity there because I'm somewhere else. Um, however, you know, like I said, I do plan on starting to expand. Awesome. And it's been great to see your growth here over the last couple of years. Uh, Wardlow, go check him out, especially in the Pittsburgh Cleveland areas. If you see him on the card, definitely uh, one not to disappoint. Wardlow underscore one on the Twitter. Thank you so much for joining us today. Indie Mayhem Show, of course, uh, Eamon, you have you are involved in Inspire Pro Wrestling down there in Texas, in Austin, Texas, who just recently had a SmackDown that was interesting. Uh, but uh, <laughs> just tonight as of this recording, right? Uh, but uh, but you did have Inspire Pro, and I know, uh, judging by the interesting questions you've been asking me on Facebook, it sounds like it was a pretty curious show. So how'd it go? It was, it was really fun. Uh, 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 First show back in a little while for Inspire Pro Wrestling. We were on a slight uh, hiatus, uh, getting stuff uh, sort of recouped and stuff like that. Uh, uh, finding a new venue in particular, uh, being the thing. And we had a new venue, and it was the Red Oak Ballroom in Austin, Texas. Um, this place was beautiful. Uh, I, the first time I got to really see it as like walking in, seeing it, uh, was uh, this past Sunday. And when I walked into the building, I was like, this is awesome. This is going to be really, really cool. It's a really awesome, swanky place. Like, um, the, the it just pr- adds like a really great vibe to our shows. And I'm so excited to um, continue doing more shows there because it's going to be, I think, just a perfect venue for us and and really add to add to what we're trying to put out there for Inspire Pro. Um, yeah, it was really fun. It's it's been a long time since I uh, you know uh, got to work. Obviously, now it's since April, so it's been really cool getting to uh getting to get back at it particularly uh uh with a brand new tag uh tag partner uh commentary partner uh that being alex del barrio who is the former uh alex reyes from nxt uh he is awesome uh he is unbelievably awesome i can't say enough good things about him uh he was a real real pleasure to work with i can't wait to kind of um pick his brain more and, and learn more from him and um, uh, just, he's got so much knowledge, not just from his time wrestling, but just so much other places that he's, you know, work. And, and I can't wait to just work with him more and, and, and gel on that level. And he's got such a professional voice and, and yeah, he was, he was awesome to work with real, real pleasure. I can't say enough good things about Alex. Um, uh, really good to have him on board here. In Inspire Pro. Uh, but yeah, it was a really stacked card or go ahead, sir. Oh no, that was all you go for it. Oh, sorry. I thought you said something. Um, no, uh, but yeah, really stacked card. A lot of really cool matches. It was also great getting to uh, meet uh, uh, Matt Cross and Lindsay Dorado, who came in, uh, who wrestled for us. Uh, uh, I can for those guys extensively. Really, really great guys. Uh, uh, glad that they're getting the success they are getting. On, on sort of two ends of the spectrum of sorts, you know, Matt in, in Lucha on the ground and Lindsay in, uh, in the Queensway Classic. Um, really great getting to work with them. Uh, we also talked on a bit on the Wrestling Mayhem show. We mentioned uh, Delilah Doom, who was on Monday Night Raw this week, uh, taking on Nia Jax. Uh, got to see a really cool kind of moment with her and Angela Slain, their, their year-long feud, uh, uh, kind of almost coming full circle and, and uh, developing a friendship, it seems. And, and that was a really cool kind of moment. <laughs> we had fans literally crying in the front row 
uh, at this moment, which is a cool feat that you can achieve as a wrestling promotion. Um, that's that's always really cool. Um, yeah, and, and we got a lot of stuff built up towards uh, our next event, uh, which is going to be September 25th. Um, uh, back at the Red Oak Ballroom uh, for Fade to Black 2. That's going to be really, really fun. Ray Rose is going to be back for us. We got the big match that everyone's been waiting for between Ricky Starks and Keith Lee to determine who is the top champion in Inspire Pro Wrestling. Mia Yim's going to be making her return, Jade from TNA, um, to take on Jessica James. There's so much fun stuff that's going to be happening. And that's just what we've announced so far. Um, there's so much more stuff that's in the, in the line, in the pipe work. And we cannot wait to announce it. This is going to be probably one of our, our more stacked events. Uh, and uh, you can check out that at inspireprowrestling.com. We'll be rolling out stuff for that. And get tickets. Front Row is already sold out, even you know over a month away. Uh, but there's still plenty of great GA tickets left. So go get those. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and I think that's a little bit of a conversation we can get into uh, as well. Of course, the Light of the Doom you mentioned on on Raw. I don't think we've had a show uh, this show since uh, we saw Britt Baker here in Pittsburgh, also taking mm-hmm. on Nia Jax. Uh, so very interesting that two friends of the Indie Mayhem show uh, were were involved in, in, in that way, and great to see like, two girls that are just uh, very short in their careers uh, getting those opportunities too. Yeah, but two, I would say two girls, and I know personally from working with Delilah, but I, I can tell almost with Brett as well, and I'm assuming you can attest to it, who work very, very hard mm-hmm. for being so young in the business. Um, uh, and, and it's cool to see them get opportunities like that. I mean, you know, I, people you know, it'd say, oh, it's a squash match, but it's it's a chance to really show, you know, to get your name out there, to get your, get, to get your face out there and, and uh, you know, it, it, it's always cool to see to see peers like that kind of get opportunities. Um, uh, it, it was really kind of a, oh my god, like that person who is you know I work with you know every month, skiing to do something they've wanted to do for a long time. So it's always really good. Or standing in the stands and saying, "I know her." You know, yeah, I know and, that person. <laughs> I know that person in the ring. Everybody is 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 is, is paying to look at right now. Uh, yeah, that's that's a pretty pretty cool feeling. So. Um, and of course, for me, I was coming out. I don't think, jeez, we haven't even talked about this. Uh, I was coming out the Gathering of the Juggalos, where I saw her there uh, with the girl fight uh, promotion uh, being featured. And then, and then that night, she was at IWC's Wipeout in a mixed tag match uh, that I got to edit on Monday. And I think I had probably just edited that on that Monday, and then went to Raw and saw her in the ring. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. and 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 uh, uh, I'm like, I recognize this ring ring gear, very familiar to me for some reason. Oh yeah. Uh, so uh, she had a hell of a weekend there a couple weeks ago. So that's really really cool to see. And and, and you were mentioning that that you 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 of course being in Texas, um, there's a lot of familiar faces that pop up uh, uh, across WWE for you. Um, and this has been the case. We've had well, Ricky Starks. We had on uh, uh, after he had, was getting slammed through a table with Ryback, for instance, right? And, and security, yes. and, and all kinds of interesting uh, spots he's been in. Um, so I, I know, I know for you, you're, you you can't wait because you just you just play the uh, you just play the uh, the Where's Waldo with 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 uh, people you've worked with at that point. Yeah, and then speaking of Ricky Starks, uh, due to the main event this week, uh, our Inspire Pro Champion apparently is going one on one with Kane. Uh, which will be fun. Um, I, I believe uh, Moonshine Mantel, who we've had on the show as well, was uh, Heath Slater's doctor backstage on SmackDown. Um, huh. Yeah, the, a lot of cool stuff. And, you know, security guard people and stuff like that happen too. And it's, it's always real fun to see because, you know, like being people, and I'm sure on a fan side as well, but being able to work with those people and be like, oh, I recognize them, I recognize that guy. Like, it, it's always real nice. Right, right. Yeah, yeah we mean- I'm back at, it's it's a benefit also of the brand split is that we get more of these jobber matches, so it's like more opportunities to see these kind of people. Absolutely, and even that it's coming on main event as well. That's pretty cool to see. Um, I mean, that's a place where it should happen, right? Because you know, like yeah. just like the superstars in the in the wrestling challenges back in the day. So yeah, definitely a lot of really cool opportunities there. Well, of course, we talked to Ward though here early. A, gr- a great talk with him. Uh, uh, so thank you for him for being on. Uh, he will be featured this weekend at International Wrestling Cartel's Caged Fury. This is an event last year that was uh, actually that's the poster right behind me here in the studio because <laughs> I it's one of the cooler looking posters and, and I love it because it is like Tommy Dreamer and Rhino 
uh, in a cage for the IWC title and everything, right? And they had another kind of war games kind of match, too, with a lot of friends of the show, like Darren De Niro and Joe Rosa. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think, I, you know, this is always a big show. It, 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 it's They always have some great moments in the cage. Uh, it's been a lot, you know, over the years, it's been uh, a really fun show. You know, and 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 this year is going to be no difference. Of course, uh, the main event. I'm looking forward to this, and this has been a pretty good. They had a great killer match uh, at Super Indie, actually, and then uh, uh, Dylan Bostic at, at Wipeout this past month too. Uh, DJ Z, the Zima Zion, uh, Shima Zion, however you may know him from uh, uh, TNA, uh, taking on Dylan Bostic. It's a cage match for the title. And Loser Lee's IWC, I thought was an interesting twist that they threw in there this week. Um, but aside from that, uh, some other great stuff, of course, uh, also Steel Cage, friends of the show, Chris LaRusso, who's made some appearances on Ring of Honor recently against Andrew Palace. Uh, the rematch from the end of Super Indie, the, the much, the much lauded Super Indie this year that ended with, uh, Josh Grissom, I'm sorry, Jonathan Grisham against Josh Alexander, the indie, uh, super, current Super Indie champion, Josh Alexander this is going to be his first match uh, defending the belt, actually, uh, on this show. Uh, that's just see them go at it again. It's going to be amazing. And, and I'm actually going to be there for this one, too. So looking forward to that, as well as Ray Lynn versus Lou Fisto. Lou nice. Fisto. Eamon, why should I be excited for Lou Fisto? <laughs> Lou Fisto is uh, pretty awesome. She was kind of... Uh... Uh, she's a uh, can well, she's technically Canadian, but also builds herself from Japan. Um, she so she's kind of like almost an El Generico in a sense. Um, but like she uh, was, she's been doing this for a long period of time. She was kind of the first person to really kind of break out doing you know gender wrestling and 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 being. She was a uh, you know a mainstay of CZW uh, at the time. Uh, you know, really kind of and and she's a not not just hardcore wrestler, but very talented pro wrestler. Um, and, and, and I'm interested to see that match because there's two, it's two different sides of the spectrum with uh, Lufisto and Ray Lynn. So, um, that, that should be exciting. Awesome. And of course, uh, great tag action, uh, the fraternity, uh, a very entertaining group. I guess one I haven't heard about E Y F B O, which I think are also from maybe North of the border. And I think they actually, I think they're from like the new England area, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I know they've worked, um, uh, beyond wrestling in the past. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So always good to see some new blood because it's always, you know, hey, let's see if they stick out, you know. Uh, especially, yeah. um, IWC probably doesn't have, it, it, I mean, it's not ECW or, or anything, but it's probably not the easiest crowd to impress, you yeah. know. I mean, it's very, it's a very, it's super indie. It's a very indie kind of crowd, right? Uh, right. So uh, that'll be interesting. And of course, great to see some, some, some familiar faces. Bronco McBride, Marshall Gambino, Remy LeVay, Keith Hott. And the return of Jack Sheridan, a guy that uh, made his debut back at Proving Grounds a few months ago. So aside from that, I also look forward because apparently the artwork for the next show is Pokemon themed. They better do more than just have fancy artwork for it. It better because be. of course it is. I hope that the venue has been checked out as a Pokestop. Well, in fairness, I don't think, and and we'll definitely go into it more uh, uh, in the coming weeks when it gets closer. But. Uh, uh, because Sorg, you meant we, we know, you're going to be, uh, uh, I believe you're going to King of Trios uh, right. this year, right? And they're doing, and they are Pokemon themed this year, <laughs> which is the amazing. That, their fan, to the degree that their fan conclave is now a Pokemon Go meet and greet. Yep. Which is yep, perfect. Yep. Like, it, and with the crew it, that's it, going, it's the perfect thing for us. Yeah. So yeah, I embrace that kind of stuff. It's always, it's always, it's always good. Well, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll bring some ideas back with us. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, uh, check that out, iwcwrestling.com. If you're uh, in the Pittsburgh area, it's one definitely worth checking out. Get tickets over there. And, of course, they'll be available afterwards on IndieWrestling.us. Mere days after the event, one way or another, we'll make it happen. A little, little longer turnaround than, than, than we have before. Um, I've kind of, Eamon, I've made a decision. I've made a decision. I'm going with this for the time being. Uh, we are okay. no, we are no longer live switching shows. Oh, okay. I mean, this has partly been because of my schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually have not attended an IWC show since April. April. So mm-hmm. you, you're you're 
And RWA, I just had my first one back probably since about April or March. Uh, yeah, actually, that's right. Actually, I hadn't been to the RWA since March, and we just, just came back uh, there at the end of July. Um, partly because of that kind of stuff, and partly because we had changed and upgraded some stuff um, for HD. And I wasn't right. terribly happy with the quality that we were doing, and and the uh, the the stuff that the stuff for us to do it right was going to be prohibitively expensive. Uh, right. And we know we're on indie indie wrestling budget, right? <laughs> we uh, don't have a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, that's the case. I'm, I'm, uh, so so, and it didn't work for how indie wrestling needed to be filmed. So we've gone to post editing. Um, but, you know, right. partly because we needed to, because again, I'm not there to do the switching. We don't have anybody to replace and set it up and, know, and and learn how to do that kind of stuff. So I was like, okay, we will just post edit these. I am so happy with the quality. Like, yeah, you, you don't like. I I personally have not liked the quality of several shows that we've done. I mean, over the years, there's been stuff where like, man, we didn't get the lighting right. Man, we didn't do this. But it's stuff that you can't really fix in post because you did it live, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which you know defeats the purpose of doing it live if you have to go back and re-edit the entire thing, right? Uh, so we've been doing that. I have a little bit more control over things, and I can say hands down, I have never been more happy than I am with how IWC Wipeout, RWA's last two shows, I think, and uh, 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 Super Indie especially. Like I will put that on the shelf with anything else uh, that that I've done. It is. It is. Uh, I, I I feel real good about those those products. Um, Rob and Chachi have been killing it on the uh, on the camera work, um, and uh, it, it's been pulling together really nice. And I hope that people have been enjoying it. Uh, we've, we've, I've gotten some decent feedback uh, just from reviews, just from um, just just people that have bought the shows on IndieWrestling.us, and I, and I hope it's something that people notice. And I hope um, um, you know something that we can keep up here. As we go, and we grow, and uh, and uh, as Indie Wrestling US has met it met its uh, one year anniversary this month, so of course we have a sale going on over there. You guys can read about over Indie Wrestling US, and uh, and 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 I feel real good that we've kind of I'm I'm looking at the orders that come in, and we I I think we're able to get in front of a lot more eyeballs than we did before when we were just doing mm-hmm. DVDs when I took over back in 2012. Uh, the experiment is working. <laughs> and uh, it, and it's only going to grow. And we got a lot of really cool opportunities uh, to get more cool stuff out there, to grow the guys that we, you know, the, that we first started helping, RWA and IWC, of course, and, of course, our friends, you know, Joe Dabrowski and, and VOW and, 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 of course, Border City Wrestling is a part of it, you know, with a couple of shows and, and some piecemeal stuff like that, of course. Uh, the DBI, of course, is a part of it, too, uh, at least the first three years of it. So, I mean, we got a really nice catalog, and I hope that uh, it's, it's something that people uh, uh, enjoy. So, uh, and, 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 and I think the biggest accomplishment is we're also part of the conversation. Uh, Matt Carlins, I have to give a lot of credit to because he did the Around the Indies and a column here for the last, I don't know, I forget when we started it, but I want this to be more than just a store, you know, for us to shill our stuff, right? Obviously, we do this show where it's us talking about what we're doing, you know? I mean, geez, I mean, you're part of Inspire Wrestling, we're talking about that all the time. You're not even part of the site, right? Your your (laughs) stuff's all at SmartMark, and a lot of the stuff that we're pointing out is at SmartMark, too. We're not a replacement for SmartMark. We, we can't be. Right. I mean, the Smart Mark's been doing this for longer than anybody. High Spots has been doing this for longer than anybody. We're partnered with them on certain stuff. Um, and I think, you know, we're hopefully carving our own niche over here away from them that can coexist and everything like that. Um, but I just wanted, this started because I wanted a great, positive place to support indie wrestling. And maybe give opportunities for some indie wrestling to get out there that maybe some some others wouldn't take. Um, it is actually kind of funny because since I started this, now those other places take the indie wrestling that we have. Uh, so so uh, that that's pretty cool too. Uh, so yeah, I just want it to be a place, and hopefully we'll have some other opportunities uh, to grow that and grow the community. And uh, much like we have with Wrestling Mayhem Show, and uh, and and again, just be a nice, awesome positive place to talk about indie wrestling 
and, uh, and, and share and find out more about indie wrestling and explore it a bit too. So uh, thank you everybody that has supported with uh, uh, listening to the shows, reading the columns, sharing a link, whatever the case may be. And certainly, certainly the people that have written for us and uh, uh, you aiming for getting the word out too and being part of this show too. That's really kind of become intermingled kind of craziness. So uh, it's been real fun. Absolutely. It's been, it's been a good year. <laughs> and it's only getting bigger. We're in the third year of Indie Mayhem Show. Indie, indie Wrestling Day. Oh, God. Day. Yeah. Yeah, think about that. And, <laughs> that's, that's weird to think. And only now have we had scheduling problems. Think about that. Yes. Only now have we had gaps in the schedule and had problems getting people attached and everything like that. It took us three years, uh, two and a half years, to run out of steam on this thing. <laughs> and I don't want to say that we've run out of steam. We just, I mean, obviously you have some stuff going on. You're, you're, you're moving around. You're dealing with school and stuff and, 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 and everybody else's schedule. I gotta, I'm going God knows where these days. And uh, <laughs> it, it all kind of compounded and we kind of lost the, the cadence of the show. But we're uh, working on some things to bring it back. SmackDown Live doesn't help either. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, we're we're gonna keep going, I, and it's it's. Um, I'm hoping we can get back to every week. You will have a show next week, I believe. We have another yes. one. Uh, we have an interview in the can with Connor Claxton of uh, CZW fan, the guy with the wrench, Vicious Outcast Wrestling. I'm looking forward to that. We'll get some more Amon's friends in here too. Absolutely. Uh, I have some ideas of people to call up and say, "Hey, you want to?" Actually, I got some requests out right now. That I'm waiting to uh, schedule some people that are, have been far, far, far overdue to be a part of this show. And I think we'll have great conversations, guys, that I don't think you've heard of, but I think you'll instantly love when you have a conversation with them. So, Eamon, where can people find you and that beautiful singing voice of yours or well, laid over pro wrestling? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Amen to Please, but you can also check out Inspire Pro Wrestling on Twitter at Inspire Pro Res, uh, and and over at InspireProWrestling.com for all of our show information and, and whatnot. Uh, also, I want to know, go subscribe to us over at YouTube.com slash Inspire Pro Video because as of today, as we're recording this, we just put up a match featuring uh, now WWE Raw uh, featured uh, enhancement talent Delilah Dean and Angelus Lane. Uh, in a sand in the street fight from back last year, it is one of the most wild matches you will ever see, and you can see it entirely free over on our YouTube channel. Go check it out. When we first talked to her, wasn't she like three matches into her career? Yeah, yeah. And, wow. And, yeah. And I feel like Britt wasn't too far in, like it was like about the same spot. That's amazing. That's awesome. You need to get Britt back on and talk to her about that experience. Absolutely. <laughs> We'll have to get her and not, and and Delilah on to compare uh, working Nia Jax. Yeah, we're going both on. So so so, how hard did Nia punch you in the face? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nia Jax, I, I'm becoming a big fan of her as well. So uh, at Sorgat Sean, if you want to ask me about video production, pro wrestling, whatever the case may be, uh, of course you can hit us up as usual about wrestling related things at Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. Or the hotline, uh, 412-206-WMS0, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. Wrestling Mayhem Show is the Facebook group and the Facebook page. Thank you so much for joining us. Check out IndieWrestling.us if I haven't talked about it enough this episode. And our friends all over. And please remember, support Indie Wrestling. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.